here we go what's going on y'all it's a little bit different setting this time i'm actually just uh finishing work right now still at work but i, I wanted to go live uh, i wanted to go at seven so my apologies for making this a late one but too much to talk about today for me not to go live so let's get into it man howie roseman does it again philadelphia eagles have a hell of a, a weekend and a week so far you know with that <clears throat> 53 man roster, uh, final roster, whatnot, cutting down to that. And then the trades, man. Let's just go right into it, man. Howie Roseman, big trade for Chauncey Gardner Johnson from the Saints. Uh, fourth year safety, traded a, what did we get? We uh, traded a fifth round pick in 2023 and a sixth round pick in 2024. And we got. Uh, CJJ back and then a seventh rounder in 2025 and then today we traded Jalen Rager to the Vikings so in essence we ended up getting um, a starting safety for Jalen Rager we traded another pick so it ended up being a wash so we ended up getting trading Jalen Rager for a starting caliber safety I mean that's that's a hell of a job, bravo, my guy, and he's he just keeps pulling off these moves over and over and over again. It's very very impressive. So for those that are down on Howie or had the criticisms, we'll see how this pans out. But it's a hell of a move. I put it like this: nobody would take Jalen Rager over Chauncey Gardner Johnson. And now you've addressed um, a potential issue at safety because they released Anthony Harris and. They did that, and we were kind of confused, like, whoa, what did they do that for? And it's because they had to deal in the works. And boom, he's here now. He had a big year last year, 32 solo tackles, 46 total tackles, four tackles, four loss, two sacks, seven pass breakups, and three interceptions all over the place. Lined up 80% of the time at nickel, but also lined up some at safety. So... I'll tell you exactly what I think is he, they're going to want to do with him in a second. But this, is this ironic to you that the Eagles just keep getting good safeties from the Saints? Malcolm Jenkins years ago, and that panned out for a Super Bowl for us. And if you remember back early in his career, Malcolm Jenkins was a cornerback at The Ohio State, and he played cornerback, I believe, his first year if not his first two years with the Saints before they moved him to safety. So you're talking about a guy who's young, only four, going into his fourth year, who's had good experience playing at the safety position in addition to being one of the best nickel cornerbacks in the NFL in the 2021 and 2022 season. They really got a really good deal. Uh, I might even say they got a steal here. So you're going to pair up Marcus Epps, who – not a playmaker, not flashy, but he's going to do the solid fundamentals that you need at free safety. And then you pair him up with Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. And then on the outside, you have Darius Slay and Bradbury and then Avante Maddox in the slot. Now you have a hell of a secondary, I think. And honestly, they might even be better served moving Avante Maddox back to safety because he's played safety in this scheme. He knows what he's doing. He's fast, good instincts. He He's... He's already been there, done that. So you can mi honestly mismatch Vontae Maddox and Jordan Johnson at the nickelback and safety spots. And I think they have a lot of versatility here. They, they really, really do. This, this changes a lot in addition to all the upgrades that they made on defense. And then, like I said, yesterday they cut Anthony Harris, and then today they cut Davion Taylor. And we thought he was going to make the roster, but – Today, they ended up giving him his walking papers, and he's gone. And if you, you saw uh, last year, but especially this preseason, uh, the game against the Dolphins where he was out of position on a touchdown pass, and then against the Browns, he allowed a – is either a touchdown run or a very long run, and he was in position to make the tackle on the sideline. Oh, yeah, against Josh jo Josh Dobbs. And he didn't tackle him. He let him go another 40, 50 yards down the sideline. Little things like that. It, that's the reason why he's not here. Had all the physical talent in the world, developmental prospect, 
just raw speed, but he could never put it together. It didn't seem like he had the instincts to play linebacker at the NFL level. So now you have Jalen Berger going and the Davion Taylor going. You have two of your top three picks from the 2020 draft out the door. The only other guy you have left is Jalen Hurts. And then you hit on Quez Watkins and Jack Driscoll. But, yo, the top of your draft in 2020, out the door. So that's not a good look. That's not good. You know, everybody's always going to be talking about the Justin Jefferson pick, especially now that Jalen Berger is <laughs> in Minnesota. So Minnesota has both of them anyway. But they did a good job in getting Garner Johnson. That was a very shrewd move, and it's going to serve us well this year, I believe. In other news, we have <laughs> Tyron Smith has the injury down in Dallas. And guess who's rumored to be visiting Dallas right now? Jason Peters <laughs> is visiting Dallas to possibly become the starting left tackle for the Eagles while Tyron Smith is recovering from that surgery for his left hamstring. Minimum of three to four months. So, wouldn't that be interesting if Jason Peters is playing for the Cowboys? I, man, I, I don't even know what to say or think about that one. If, oof. That, that, that's going to be something different if he comes to the link in a Cowboys jersey. There's going to be – it's going to be bizarre. Bizarre. I'll tell you that much. It's going to be more booze than cheers, I think, if you were to do that. Yeah, so those are the updates for the Eagles. You know, just great, great move there. Getting Gordon Johnson, that just – that's huge. And that leads me into the next article I wanted to go over briefly um, with Howie Roseman. And there's an article I'm reading on the Eagle, inside the Eagles.com. There's an article that says Eagles Vice President Howie Roseman is named the NFL's least trusted general manager. Least trusted general, general manager. It's crazy to me. But at the same time, you have to look at how shrewd he is. I mean, he came up under Joe Banner, who, trust me, he wasn't that well-liked by many agents. Now, around the league, you know, he still has a pull around the league. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to make a trade like this with the Saints. And he did it before with the Malcolm Jenkins trade, so and the Zach Ertz trade, and so on and so forth. So, obviously, he has friends around the league, but in terms of the player agents, they do not like him. And the second most disliked GM was Joe Douglas, who ironically had a two-year stint under Howie Roseman. So did he pick up some tricks of the trade? Who knows? But there's a reason why he's been this successful, and it's a reason. But there's also a reason why he's not very well liked. You know, I think sometimes that goes hand in hand. So just some food for thought. And then lastly, the the news that came out about. Tom Brady and his thoughts on the bronze version of the Drink Champs, the barbershop or whatever. And he was talking about he was supposed to be going to my Las Vegas Raiders. But apparently there was friction between him and John Gruden. Um, he didn't, I don't know if he just came, if he came out and said that directly, but I think the issue was John Gruden's personality was not going to mesh well with Tom Brady. Because the way that John Gruden talks to all his quarterbacks, Rich Gannon, Derek Carr, whoever it may be, Brad Johnson with the Buccaneers, you talk to Tom Brady like that, it's just not going to go down the same way because he's like, yo, dude, I got six rings. I know what I'm doing. I've been there, done that. Hell, I'm, I'm coming off a Super Bowl victory two years ago, you know, away from Belichick. So, I, I, you know, I, I've been around the block a couple of times, and I think that was a big issue with why that didn't pan out. But on that show, he said, yo, I, I think the Raiders rejected him for whatever reason. Now, I didn't you know, see the episode or whatnot, but they rejected him, long story short, and 
his response not so suddenly was like, when I see you guys, I'm going to F y'all up. And well, we had a game against the Buccaneers, I think, a year ago, and he threw five touchdowns against us when he came into Las Vegas. And he seemed like he was extra fired up, and maybe that's the reason why, because he got denied. <laughs> you know, you got rejected. Nobody likes that, especially when you're somebody that's uber competitive like that. You said, I think I can do better. I'm going to move on. And he was like, okay, bet. If I see y'all again, I got something for y'all. I want smoke with y'all. So just food for thought there. Imagine Tom Brady and Gronk being in Las Vegas. We might have had one or two rings right now instead of the Buccaneers. Whew. That being said, let me know what you guys think about that little tidbit of information as well as the moves that Howie Roseman made uh, the past couple days with Jalen Redger and then bringing in Gardner Johnson, the big splash move there for next to nothing, which is crazy to me. Uh, that's it for now. I'll be talking about boxing later on this week. There's a big boxing match that has been made official that I want to talk to you guys about as well as the upcoming match with Triple G and Canelo. With that being said, thanks for tuning in. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you thought about this and what you want to hear me talk about next. And go Birds, baby. Peace.